As more time passes, I seem to really appreciate the Xbox 360 just for what it was, and I'm starting to think it may be my favorite video game console of all time. It was just really revolutionary at its time. There were so many great games, great communities, and just great experiences to be had if you were an Xbox 360 owner. But even with all of the great additions and new experiences you could have on the Xbox 360, the 360 was nowhere by any means flawless, and there were a ton of issues that Xbox owners had to deal with on a regular basis. So today we thought it'd be interesting to take a look back at the biggest problems of the Xbox 360. Now before we jump into this video though, we do have to say, despite these issues that had come up with the 360 over the years, look at the great legacy and just the amazing success that the 360 ended up being despite all of these issues. It's kind of interesting to look at. And if you like more retrospectives on all things Xbox 360, be sure to subscribe to this channel because that's kind of one of our major focuses here. Okay, jumping into this video, obviously we can't talk about problems with the 360 without talking about the infamous Red Ring of Death. Even though I got my first Xbox 360 in 2008, and luckily enough I never got plagued with this console breaking problem, this was one of the biggest problems with the Xbox 360. Pretty much if you had an older model of the console, it was inevitable that at some point along the line your console would get the Red Ring of Death. Now, there's a few people out there, and if you're one of them, congratulations, that did not have the Red Ring of Death happen to them, or maybe you sold your console off before the Red Ring of Death happened. But yeah, this was a really serious design problem that essentially just stemmed from the compact pieces of hardware tucked into the Xbox 360 case. Man, this was something that probably impacted every single Xbox 360 user, because even if you personally didn't have your Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death, you likely knew someone who had happened to and then all of a sudden you couldn't play with your friend because he didn't have a 360 because his was toast. I even remember people trying to wrap their Xboxes up in towels and hope to cause the console to overheat and then let them reset it and maybe it would turn on and oddly enough this worked some of the time. It's a really weird fix that sometimes worked but it definitely was never a permanent solution. Fortunately enough eventually Microsoft finally launched a new version of the console that would not have the red ring of death issue and they did handle it as well as they could, offering extended warranties to anyone who owned the older version of the 360. But yeah, doing the full hardware remodel was the solution that Microsoft really needed for the Xbox's future. And while the new 360s don't have a red ring of death problem, there's still a handful of instances out there where people's newer Xbox still get bricked in one way or another, but it's definitely not nearly as common as the former. And while I was lucky enough to dodge the red ring of death, I was not so lucky to dodge this next problem, or most of the next problems that we're going to go over here. The Xbox 360s had a really, really bad reputation of scratching up discs if knocked over, and since the Xbox 360 was kind of advertised as a console that you could either have standing up or have down horizontally, a lot of people opted for the standing up way just because it took up less space in some people's setups, and I was one one of these people at first. Yeah, so 2008 on Christmas, the day that I got my Xbox 360, I plugged it into my TV, booted up Guitar Hero World Tour because Guitar Hero still was a thing back then. And as I reached over for my guitar to plug into the Xbox, I accidentally knocked over my Xbox and was greeted with this grinding sound that literally sounded like the worst thing ever. I was terrified because I thought I had broke my Xbox 360 that I hadn't even gotten a chance to play with yet, but oddly enough, I was relieved to find that I had only ruined my Guitar Hero World Tour disc forever. And it turns out that I wasn't the only person who had this problem. There's a ton of people in the Xbox forums or on YouTube who had the same experience where their Xbox 360 would be slightly moved while the disc was still in the console, causing the disc to be completely destroyed with a scratch going around the bottom side of the disc. It was really disappointing because I feel like a lot of people probably lost some of their favorite games because of this. Fortunately, I came up with a workaround where I would go to a video game rental store like Blockbuster or Hollywood Video, rest in peace, and I rented the game that I scratched and then I would install it on my hard drive, return the game, and then my scratch disc usually would run the game off of the hard drive. Kind of like how you run 
physical copies of games nowadays on the Xbox One anyways, I was just a little ahead of the time just because I was reckless with my console. This next one's not so much of a broken issue, but it still was a pretty big fail on the Xbox and Microsoft Teams part, and that was the launch of the Kinect. Yeah, the Kinect had some really interesting and revolutionary hardware in the camera, and obviously they were just trying to compete with some sort of novelty that Nintendo had done with their motion control and tried to take it a step further by letting you play without a controller. But honestly, while they made it sound like it would be the coolest thing ever, it ended up being a massive flop. Like, no one really used the Xbox Kinect outside of a few select titles, and it was more mostly reused for one-off games where people just tried it out and never played it again. I ended up being one of those idiots who bought a Kinect thinking it would be the coolest thing ever and promptly never used it after a couple of small experiences with it, but I do remember playing Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary and if I yelled the word grenade, I could throw a grenade. And I thought that was really cool back then. It wasn't that cool though. Grenade. Grenade. See, look at that technology. I could just press the left trigger and throw a grenade, but then I don't get to say the word grenade. Also, during the earlier days of the Xbox 360's life, there were also some other just weird problems that you wouldn't really expect from a console that the Xbox 360 had to deal with, and it's most likely based off of how the firmware was written on the console itself, but a lot of people over a time of a few years or even a couple months who played a lot of games and had different save files and maybe occasionally downloaded things off of the marketplace or tried out demos would run into problems where their Xbox 360's would run extremely slow. And this was a really weird issue to have, and it turns out that a lot of it was caused by the Xbox 360 caching a ton of random files onto the hard drive. And if you downloaded a lot of stuff, your hard drive would even get more full and would make your console run significantly worse. And while this is an obvious issue for a lot of PC owners, if your hard drives are full, your computer runs slower, when you buy a console, it's not really necessarily something that you think about. And a lot of the times, you had to clear the cache on your Xbox 360. Now, in the early days of the 360, there wasn't just a simple clear cache button. You had to type in a specific button combination on a certain screen of the dashboard to have the option to clear your cache. It was later in an update revealed to to be added in as a feature you could just press and automatically do, but before that, you couldn't do it, and it was really a weird issue to have, and I remember only having this resolved when I had called Microsoft, and they walked me through typing in that button combination. Similarly, there were a couple other smaller issues along the way that would only be fixed with hot fixes from Microsoft over the years. One of the major ones I remember were just these various problems that caused my Xbox 360 to freeze, and a lot of people also dealt with this. One of them was a trick you could play on other players where you would invite them to a party, send them a message, and then kick them from the party, which would result in their Xbox 360 freezing, and they'd have to unplug the console and plug it back in just to get it turned on. This was something a couple of my friends did to some other people, and they kind of got really mad and raged, but ultimately it was mostly harmless. But yeah, despite the rocky beginnings of the Xbox 360, for the most part, as Microsoft and Xbox continued to improve the consoles over the years, they made large leaps in the right direction, and maybe that's one of the major reasons why the 360 did so well and had these great dedicated communities on there and some really dedicated players along the way. Now, of course, when they did upgrade the Xbox 360 to its newer model in 2010, the major issue that I remember from that is the fact that if you bought the base version of the new design, it only came with a four gigabyte hard drive, which literally limited anything you could do on the console. You weren't really able to download anything at all, and it really was not the ideal way to experience the Xbox 360, and if you only had a four gigabyte hard drive in your Xbox, it pretty much was required that you upgraded that if you wanted to have a good experience on your Xbox. And of course, we also can't forget how flimsy or how often Xbox 360 headsets seem to be. No matter what quality you bought, it felt like all of the time I would have to go through a new headset every couple of months to at least one new headset every single year. 
whether the actual headset broke or it just stopped working, or the worst was when the plug on it would break off. I just felt like myself and a ton of other people included always had problems with their Xbox 360 headsets not working the way that they were intended. But outside of those problems, what problems did you have? Were you plagued by any of these issues along the way? Let us know your experiences in the comments section down below. We are still really big fans of the Xbox today. We've been playing a ton of Xbox One games and backwards compatible games, and we just wanted to give a quick moment to plug our Twitter handles. So if you guys want to play with us or just see our opinions on what's going on in the Xbox world, we never really plug our Twitter accounts, but we're gonna do it right now. You can follow me at Rocket Elijah on Twitter, or you can follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke on Twitter. We're pretty active on Twitter and we're gonna follow back most people who follow us in the next couple of days. So if you guys want a follow back and you guys wanna see what we're tweeting on there, our Twitter links are also in the description down below. All right guys, that's it for today and we'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.